Hello and welcome to Digging with Dugan. Today we're going to be picking back up with the second chapter of the Iliad. Uh, we will be getting through this chapter, but uh, a significant portion of the chapter is going to be edited out uh, compared to the book, simply because most of this chapter is a big long list. Uh, the first bit, which we're going to, again, compared to the chapter, cover pretty briefly, uh, is a pair of extraordinarily flowery speeches, uh, which is supposed to sort of hype you up. And then there's some, some more uh, flowery stuff about Athena and some, the armies marching, which is supposed to, again, fill your desire for narrative uh, as a prep to sort of like a super, super long list. Uh, now this list is dull. Uh, <laughs> um, I imagine uh, when this was written, you're supposed to know who each and every one of these peoples are and who the heroes they're associated with are, and you're supposed to get images of all their deeds and whatnot. But uh, we don't have that for most of these, so it's going to be edited a lot. Anyways, we pick up with Odysseus giving a speech, and uh, near the end of his speech, he talks about an omen that he's seen has to do with a red snake that slithers up a tree to eight chicklets. It eats all the chicklets and then their mother, uh, the ninth bird. And so he uses this as an analogy for how long it is going to take for their army to sit outside of Troy, which apparently the book asserts they've already been there for eight years. He claims that uh, the ninth year is us eating the big bird, you know, as the snake did. The snake turns to stone. Uh, after it eats the last one. And uh, I don't know how that's not a bad omen, but they say it's not. And uh, so they're, the men are hardened by this. Uh, they appreciate the speech, uh, they all cheer. And then he passes the torch to uh, Agamemnon. Agamemnon, who says some words uh, on how he appreciates Odysseus and uh, all his hard work. And then he surprisingly, he humbles himself, and uh, he talks about how he was petty, and how he shouldn't have insulted Achilles, but the men should all be prepared and hardened for this coming battle, he gives an old speech, the men are happy with it, and at his side is Athena, uh, she, as the men are lining up, leaves his side and walks down the line of men, and as she does, the men are hardened, you know, they're, they're brave, and they have very heavy battle lust. And uh, so ends our flowery narrative, and it gets into this near infinite list. Now, I cannot emphasize how long this list is. It is like 30 minutes of listing off a group of peoples, the number of ships they have, the color of the ships, and then the name of their commander, and whether or not he's an impressive fella or lady. And um, some of the heroes are very, very famous heroes, like Ajax. Uh, some of them are demigods, uh, you know, the bastard children of the gods. And uh, some of them know it, some of them don't. Each side has its fair share of heroes and demigods. Uh, lots of peoples we've heard, a few peoples really, that we know from recorded Greek history, like the Athenians and the Spartans, and uh, they mentioned the Thebans, but they got sacked in this, so they're kind of a ho-dunk town at the moment. Uh, they mention the Thracians, who are Grecified barbarians. Sorry, barbarians is the, the quotes. Uh, along, they go over all the island peoples, uh, the Cretans, the Rhodians, uh, the Ionians, uh, a bunch of peoples I've never even heard of. I've never even heard, like, word correlations to modern people, so a lot of these kingdoms, they, they get snuffed out at some point between this story and recorded history. And, uh, it's, it's a long list. <laughs> but, uh, it ends at sort of the, you know, right before the supposed clash that they're hyping us up for in the, uh, Agamemnon is on his way to go prod the Trojans into a battle. And the narrative makes you believe that there's going to be some sort of a battle. There's also a brief mention 
of some sort of a tomb uh, to, I think it was uh, the Amazons, uh, tomb of the Amazons near the shore where the uh, where Agamemnon's army is going to be landing. Uh, and then it leaves off with uh, Achilles being salty in his ship, not participating, and all the armies getting ready to attack each other. And then it sort of like flashes to Hector, and he's talking to some woman, and she tells him that uh, that he should give each of his commanders full autonomy, which I will tell you is, at least from later history, unique, very, very unique. That gives the men the freedom to break, to break like lines, to not have an organized formation, to just do whatever the commander wanted to. So, uh, yeah. That's the end of chapter two, and it uh, looks like we're hyping up for some sort of a conflict that should, we should see here in the near future.